We are partakers of the divine nature. Every one of us tonight who are truly born again have within our hearts and spirits the very life of God. We are born into the family of God. We are the children of God, not in name only, but in nature. We have the nature of God in our spirit. If any man be joined to the Lord, he is one spirit. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight is the Christian ideally considered in terms of the king of birds, the eagle. This is what God wants you to be. And I trust that it'll challenge you. Now, being an eagle is probably not as simple as just stating the fact. Because the eagle, to become an eagle, goes through a very strenuous and distinctive kind of training, as, Paul, as Moses tells us here in Deuteronomy. Now let's notice the order of the little eaglet's training. The eagle stirs up the nest, breaks it up, flutters or hovers over the young, spreads her wings, and then bears them on her wings. Now what is this talking about? It's talking about how an eaglet becomes an eagle. Well, it all starts out by the eaglet being born. And I suppose a little eaglet is just about as delightful a little creature as all little creatures are when they're little creatures. And the little eaglets are way up in their eerie home, of which we'll speak later, and they're snuggled in that magnificent home that has been prepared for their coming as loving parents anticipating the fact that little ones are soon to be a part of their family have labored to build this nest way up in some craggy height. First bringing those great jagged pieces of branch and forming a scaffolding into which they cleverly by divinely implanted intuition weave a softness until it is as tender as down and into this delightful home are born the little creatures that are to become their kind. And as the little eaglets are born and they come into some sense of self-consciousness, they never had it so good. It's beautiful. Home is marvelous. And uh, mom goes out there every day and comes back with some choice rabbit meat or some delectable gastronomical epicurean tidbit to drop in to the little gaping uh, mouths of the eaglets as they wait. This is terrific. Oh, this is marvelous. All you got to do is sleep and eat. Hallelujah. This is revival. Glory to God. If I have heard it once, I have heard it a thousand times during the years of my ministry. It isn't like it was when I was first saved. You're right. <laughs> Did you expect it to be? You got to grow up sometime. You see little babies around here? Carried, fondled, fed, diapered, patted, petted passed from mother to father to grandma to great uncle to cousins and aunts, made much over. The little guy said, oh, this is terrific. I'm a star. You know? <laughs> he doesn't care who pays the taxes. He doesn't care who pays the gas bill. He doesn't care who pays the milk bill. This is terrific. So Christians come into God, and it's all very wonderful, and they're getting along so marvelously. And then things start to happen. Well, back to the little eaglets. Everything is great. But each day they're getting bigger. Each day their wings are becoming stronger. They're aware of these appendages at their side. And they wiggle them around a little bit and wonder what they're for. But they haven't been called upon to use them yet, so they're just content to be freeloaders and let mom bring it in. Let the ministry provide it. Hallelujah for conferences that feed the eaglets. Glory to God. <laughs> but one day, Mom comes over without a, 
a rabbit without a little tidbit with which to titillate the appetite of the eaglet, and she has a strange look on her face. <laughs> and instead of giving, she comes to take. And she reaches in with her great beak and she grabs a hunk of the nice downy lining of the nest. And he yanks it out. Takes it over and drops it over the side of the cliff 10,000 feet down below. <laughs> Little eagles look at one another. <laughs> hoping that mom is only temporarily deranged. But mom comes back and takes another honk of the nest and moves it out. She does this until there's nothing left but the scaffolding sticking through. Pieces of branch that aren't comfortable and the little eaglets can't find a spot. <laughs> and they're getting the idea that somehow they're moving. How many know anything about what I'm talking about? <laughs> Somebody says, that's the devil. <laughs> the devil's upsetting my life. He's disturbing me. I was getting along so well. Ever since I've been saved, it's just been wonderful. God's answered my prayer, and he's blessed me. But do you know lately, things are getting all torn up. That's the devil. No, that's not the devil. That's your heavenly father who's more interested in your character than your comfort. So now, after mom has got the nest all messed up, and there's nothing but the scaffolding sticking through, you'd think she'd done enough damage. But now she comes over with the same great beak, and she nudges one of the little eaglets out of what's left of the nest. The little eaglet says, what's up now? And he moves, she moves the little eaglet steadily toward the edge of the cliff. And the little eaglet said, it can't be. <laughs> she wouldn't. But I think she is. We're getting closer now. I'm almost, pot my God, Mom's really lost her head. She's going to kill me. And there is a sense in which the little eaglet dies before it finds its life. And there is a sense in which before you start to mature, God puts you in a place of death. And this is necessary. And as she gets the little eaglet right over to the edge, the little guy's heart's just a pumping about ready to, to bounce out of its chest when she pushes him over. And the little guy said, well, it was good while it lasted. <laughs> I'd heard about this Christianity, and I wondered if it was good enough to last. <laughs> and as he's on the way down, suddenly he remembers that just before Mom nudged him out of the nest, she did something, and it gives him hope. Because after she had nudged him out of the nest, she did something she'd never done before. She rose up on an air current, and she just hovered over the disturbed nest just for a few minutes, just hovered there on the air current so the little eaglets could look up. One little eaglet said to the other, Boy, look at Mom's wings. Hasn't she got tremendous wings? That's exactly what she wanted them to say. And so in those early days of our Christian experience, God gives us impressions of his tremendous power and ability. Because we're going to need it later on. We're going to say, are you there, Lord? Somebody say, oh, you wouldn't talk to the Lord like that. The psalmist did. He said, where are you, Lord? Why are you so far from the voice of my roarings? I've been eating my tears for breakfast, dinner, and supper, and I haven't heard from you. Where are you, Lord? Anybody ever do that? The rest of you are not honest. 